Misfire DTCs, or Diagnostic Trouble Codes, are among the top 10 reasons for the check engine light to come on. And the most common repair made? Swapping out the spark plugs. But before you start shotgunning parts at the problem, you may want to stick around and watch today's Service Done Right. The P0300 family of DTCs covers misfires and ignition related components. Maybe that's one of the reasons that changing spark plugs is one of the most popular responses to trying to fix a misfire. Well, there's a lot more to making a misfire than just swapping plugs may cure. And that all comes into play in your understanding of the code and your diagnostic process. It's fundamental. The engine needs three things to run, spark, fuel, and compression. These three must occur at the right time and in the right amount, or a misfire will result. Some misfires will be severe, others minor. All will result in lowered performance and overheating in the catalytic converter. When dealing with any fault that can turn on the check engine light, the first tool I grab is my global OBD2 scan tool. And if I'm dealing with a misfire or fuel trim code, my next visit after identifying the code is to mode two, home to freeze frame data. Think of freeze frame data as a snapshot of the conditions that the engine was being operated under at the time that the fault occurred and the ECM decided to turn on the check engine light. When you're dealing with a continuously monitored system like misfire or fuel trims, it's important for us to understand under what conditions the engine was being operated so that we can simulate them during our diagnosis and to validate our repair. In addition to the RPM and load data, I pay special attention to the fuel trims. Do they look normal or are they correcting for a lean condition? A loss of compression or a loss of spark is certainly gonna result in a misfire, but it may have little to no impact on the fuel trims. That's because if the air fuel mixture may not completely combust in the chamber, but it just might complete that combustion process in the hot exhaust before it reaches the oxygen sensor. Today, a loss of compression, even slight, even intermittent, is a more common cause of misfires. And the only way that I know of to make sure that the engine's sealing the way it should requires the use of a lab scope. My first test is a relative compression test. This quick test can easily identify a weak cylinder. But this test alone is not conclusive. More and more common are intermittent sealing issues where a valve seals one second and doesn't seal the next. And there's only two ways that I know of that you'll absolutely be able to pinpoint these issues. One requires the use of a specialized tool like this one called a pressure transducer to monitor in-cylinder pressures while the engine is running hoping to catch the culprit in the act. The other is a little more old fashioned. It's where we take a look at the burn line in the ignition pattern, whether we're connected to the primary or secondary side of the ignition system. To help identify an intermittent sealing issue, take a close look at the burn line, either on the primary or secondary, and look for turbulence like this. This anomaly is caused by the outrush of all that pressure that's in the combustion chamber at the time of combustion, trying to get past that leak site. This creates a whirlwind inside the combustion chamber that causes the spark to bow and weave, and that's what you're seeing on the burn line. Traditional compression testing with a mechanical gauge or the use of a cylinder leak down tester are not going to uncover these intermittent sealing issues. The only two ways, as I said, is by looking at the ignition pattern or through the use of an in-cylinder pressure test. Now I'll post some links in the video description to help explain those tests a little further, so be sure to check those out. And if it's the ignition system that's not supplying the needed spark, the unburned fuel will still combine with the air before it hits the upstream oxygen sensor. Again, because of the heated exhaust air present and fuel trims may also remain in a normal range. But if the misfire is being caused by a fuel issue, well, that's a different story. 
the ECM calculates the amount of fuel needed by the total air being drawn into the engine and then adjusts the pulse width to ensure that each cylinder gets its fair share. If a cylinder doesn't get its fair share, then all that's going to come out of that cylinder is air. And that's something that the oxygen sensor is going to react to. It's going to see it as a lean condition and request additional fuel from the ECM. While the methods I've shared with you today won't help pinpoint every potential cause of a misfire, they should help give you some initial direction in your diagnostics. And remember the main rule of diagnostics. The trick is to eliminate everything it can't be, and what's left over is what it has to be. Thanks for watching.